Elizabeth Taylor is considered one of the last major stars to emerge from the old Hollywood studio system. She was famous for her beauty, particularly her violet eyes, which captivated audiences from a young age and continued to enchant the world. Today, I will tell you the life story of Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Rosemond Taylor was born on February 27, 1932, in London. At the time of her birth, both of her parents were residing in British as art dealers. Shortly after the outbreak of World War II, the Taylor family returned to the United States and started a new life in Los Angeles. Soon, encouraged by a family friend, Elizabeth Taylor participated in her first Hollywood screen test. She made a profound impression on the executives at Universal Pictures during the audition. Shortly thereafter, her role in the 1942 short film There's One Born Every Minute brought her fame. However, Universal Pictures terminated their contract with her after this film. Nevertheless, Elizabeth Taylor quickly signed a new contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Her first collaboration with the studio was Lassie Come Home. With this film, Elizabeth Taylor secured a full-year film contract with MGM. She played some minor roles in the following two films, The White Cliffs of Dover and Jane Eyre. After that, Elizabeth Taylor's breakthrough role came in 1944 with National Velvet, for which she spent a hole for months to secure. The film was a huge success, grossing over $4 million and catapulting the 12-year-old into stardom. Unlike many of her child star peers, Elizabeth Taylor proved that she could seamlessly transition into more adult roles. Her beautiful appearance also greatly contributed to her film career. Not long after, at the tender age of 18, she co-starred with Spencer Tracy in Father of the Bride. Elizabeth Taylor's acting talent was showcased to the fullest in the three films she appeared in in 1954, which were the last time I saw Paris, Rhapsody, and Elephant Walk. With success in the entertainment industry, Elizabeth Taylor also gained fame off-screen due to her personal life, especially her eight marriages with seven different men. When she was very young, she believed that love is synonymous with marriage, so she longed to marry at a young age. When Elizabeth Taylor was 16 years old, Howard Hughes, who was already 44 at the time, attempted to bribe her mother with $1 million through his lawyer to achieve his goal of marrying her, but he failed. When Elizabeth Taylor was 17 years old, she met Conrad Hilton Jr. at a nightclub in Los Angeles. He was the son of Conrad Hilton, the magnet of Hilton Hotels. Shortly after, they got married. The wedding expenses were covered by MGM, who was eager to use the event as a promotion for her upcoming film Father of the Bride. However, in the weeks following their marriage, Elizabeth Taylor realized that she had made a colossal mistake. She and Conrad Hilton Jr. not only had no common interests or hobbies, but what's even worse, the other party often got drunk and verbally abused. Elizabeth Taylor even suffered a miscarriage during one violent outburst. Afterward, on December 14, 1950, she announced her separation from him, and on January 29, 1951, just eight months after their marriage, she was granted a divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty. Shortly after her divorce, 20-year-old Elizabeth Taylor once again entered the realm of marriage. Her partner was the famous 40-year-old British actor, Michael Wilding. She found the age difference between them to be very attractive and also hoped to gain a sense of security from this marriage. Before long, they welcomed two children, Michael Howard, born on January 6, 1953, and Christopher Edward, born on February 27, 1955. However, as Elizabeth Taylor grew older and more confident in herself, she began to drift apart from Michael Wilding. Additionally, her husband's career failures were one of the sources of conflict in their marriage. By the time Elizabeth Taylor went out to film Giant in 1955, gossip magazines claimed that Michael Wilding was entertaining strippers at home. This made Elizabeth Taylor extremely angry, and on July 18, 1956, she announced her separation from Michael Wilding, ultimately divorcing him on January 26, 1957. When Elizabeth Taylor married her third husband, the film producer Mike Todd, on February 2, 1957, she was already three months pregnant. They later had a daughter named Elizabeth Francis. Unfortunately, Mike Todd passed away in 1958, 
just a year after their marriage, in a plane crash. After her husband's death, Elizabeth Taylor converted to Judaism in memory of her late Jewish husband. Later, she stated that Mike Todd was one of the three great loves of her life. The other two were her subsequent husband Richard Burton and her jewelry. In 1959, Elizabeth Taylor completed the filming of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. This film also earned her a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Actress. Shortly thereafter, she married Eddie Fisher, who was the best friend of her third husband, Mike Todd, and had been the best man at their wedding two years prior. In 1961, Taylor won her first Academy Award for Best Actress for the film Butterfield 8, in which she co-starred with her husband Eddie Fisher. Later, while filming the movie Suddenly, last summer, she was invited to play the iconic role of Cleopatra. She jokingly said she would only accept the job if she was paid a million dollars. Surprisingly, 20th Century Fox agreed, making her the highest paid actress in Hollywood history at that time. Due to Elizabeth Taylor falling ill multiple times, the filming of Cleopatra was repeatedly postponed. The production was also relocated to Rome, and the male leads were subsequently recast. Rex Harrison and Richard Burton were chosen to portray Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, respectively. Despite both Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor being in their marriages at the time, they fell in love with each other. Their affair caused a major scandal worldwide. Eventually, they divorced their respective spouses in 1964 and got married to each other. Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton's first marriage lasted nearly 10 years, but it was plagued by scandals and garnered much attention, much like their extramarital affairs. They frequently engaged in verbal abuse, broke furniture, and even had physical confrontations. Meanwhile, their extravagant lifestyle was often covered by the media. Richard Burton purchased jewelry worth millions of dollars, expensive artworks, private yachts, airplanes, and several residences for Elizabeth Taylor. After their divorce in 1974, they remarried and divorced again within a year. Despite facing many ups and downs, Taylor still said that she believed they would come back together again until Richard Burton passed away in 1984. In 1976, Elizabeth Taylor met and married former Secretary of the Navy John Warner. Afterward, she set aside her acting career and devoted herself wholeheartedly to her husband's Senate campaign. However, this period of hiatus didn't last too long. When John Warner was elected as a senator in 1979, Elizabeth Taylor gradually grew weary of life as a senator's wife. She subsequently divorced in 1982 and returned to the entertainment industry. After the divorce, she began receiving treatment for drug and alcohol dependency. It was in a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center that Elizabeth Taylor met her seventh and final husband, Larry Fortinsky. He was a construction worker who happened to be receiving treatment at the same center. They later held their wedding at the Neverland Ranch owned by Michael Jackson in 1991. However, five years later, they divorced. Larry Fortinsky cited that he didn't like the pressure of being in the spotlight. By the early 1990s, Elizabeth Taylor had largely withdrawn from the entertainment industry. In 1985, Elizabeth Taylor, along with several doctors from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, co-founded the American Foundation for AIDS Research, merging the AIDS Medical Foundation with the National AIDS Research Foundation. She is considered to have become involved in AIDS research after her close friend Rock Hudson died of AIDS in 1985. In 1987, she was awarded the Legion of Honor by France, and six years later, she was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Film Institute. In 2000, she was made a dame. Over the years, Taylor experienced numerous health crises. These included a brain tumor removal surgery due to a stroke in 1997, radiation treatment for skin cancer in 2002, and spinal surgery in 2004 to treat seven compressed vertebrae. Finally, in 2011, Taylor was diagnosed with congestive heart failure, and she passed away due to illness at the age of 79. She was laid to rest at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park just outside of Los Angeles, with her gravesite located near that of Michael Jackson. Shortly after her death, her son Michael Wilding released a statement, saying my mother was an extraordinary woman who lived life to the fullest, with great passion, humor, and love. 
We will always be inspired by her enduring contribution to our world.